Well, it's very difficult to demonstrate in this type of an environment what the processor is actually doing. We can work with multiple windows. Now, if you're currently on Windows XP or Windows Vista, your taskbar should be completely empty. Everything should be closed. Because I'm on Windows 7, I do have some icons that are down here because they are pinned to the taskbar. But notice that none of them are shaded, so none of them actually have anything open and they're not running themselves. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to launch or open three different programs. So from the Start button, let's go ahead and open up the calculator. And I'm going to do this by typing and then pressing Enter when it's highlighted. And then I'll click the Start button again. And this time I'm going to choose WordPad. And lastly, a new program, also from the Start button. This one is called Paint. Remember that if you're using Windows XP, all of these can be found under All Programs in your Accessories folder. All right, so now I currently have three programs running at the same time. And there's a couple of things we need to take a look at here. First of all, in your taskbar, you should now have three buttons. In XP and Vista, you should see buttons for all three applications. And in Windows 7, like I have, we can see that I have three buttons that have shown up. If I pause over them, I can see that they are WordPad, Paint, and Calculator. Regardless of which operating system you're running, you should also be able to see that one of the buttons is lit up. It looks like it's lit up and maybe even pushed in. This is designating something called the Active Window. Even though the Windows operating system can have multiple windows open at any given time, whether it's multiple applications or just multiple documents, for example, you can only have one active window at a time. The active window is the one that will be getting attention. So going back to our analogy, you have three kids, and all three kids are actually in the process of doing something. But only one of them can actually have your full attention at any given time. As a matter of fact, we get into the psychology of it all. Only one could have any of your attention at one time. You really can't process two things at once. In our case, we have one active window, and the active window is the one where everything will happen. If you are typing, if you are clicking on buttons, if you're copying and pasting, those things only happen in the active window, and the active window is designated in a couple of ways. The first way we've already seen, the active window will be highlighted on the taskbar. Now, if I move my paint window, it's a little subtle, maybe a little bit difficult to see. But if you look at the title bar, you can see that the title bar of my active window is also darker, and the others are grayed out. So WordPad and Calculator, which I can see in the background, also have title bars. But hopefully you can see that the title bar of paint is a little bit different. Then again, showing me my active window. Well, everything that we've already learned about Windows is the same. If I have the active window and it's on top, I can do things in this particular window. I can type, and in this case, because it's paint, I could use paint brushes and things like that. So why am I bringing you back into Windows if everything is the same? Well, the first is because I wanted to show you what an active window was. Active windows don't make any difference if you only have one window open, as we have in the past. The other thing I wanted to show you, though, are some different ways of arranging windows when you have multiple windows open. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to the right side of my paint window, and I'm going to maximize it. This, of course, makes it virtually impossible for me to get to my calculator window. I can use it, though, from the taskbar. When you maximize a window, you normally will be able to still see the taskbar. The maximized window will cover everything else on the screen except the taskbar. However, if you've changed the properties of the taskbar and turned off the Always Keep the Taskbar on Top of Other Windows option, which is available in Windows XP and Vista, then a maximized window will cover everything, including the taskbar, because the maximized window actually will be sitting on top of it. I don't ever like covering the taskbar. It's too important and I use it too much. So I would not recommend deselecting this option in the taskbar properties. But if you do, then you will need to restore the window to its medium size or minimize it in order to access the taskbar itself. Now, back to paint. 
In this case, when I maximized paint, it made it impossible for me to access my calculator window, which is underneath it on the desktop. So one option of switching between windows when you have multiple windows open is to move down to the taskbar, move over the button for the item that you want, in this case I want my calculator, and simply click on the button. That brings that window to the front and also makes it the active window. You can see that the title bar of the calculator is now colored and the title bar of the paint window has been grayed out. If I wanted to switch to WordPad, I could simply click on its button. And of course, to get back to paint, I can click on the button over there as well. If you have multiple files open in any single application, when you move over the button, you may see that you have multiple items listed above the button. To make one particular one active, you would simply click on it. But to do all of this, I actually have to move down to the taskbar, maybe take my hands off the keyboard, move them to the mouse, and that can be a little time consuming. So let me show you a couple of my favorite tricks when it comes to working with multiple windows. The first is called Alt-Tab Switching, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You're going to use your Alt key and your Tab key. Now you have to kind of listen carefully as I'm doing this on my computer. I do it kind of using an L with my left hand. I press and hold the ALT button with my left thumb. While I'm still holding the ALT key, I'm going to begin pressing and releasing the TAB key. So hold ALT while you're holding ALT, press and release TAB. What you will see is that a window comes up in the middle of your screen. As you continue to hold ALT, but while you're holding the ALT key as you press and release the TAB key, you will see that each open window in turn gets highlighted in a box put around it. So there's my desktop, my paint, there's WordPad, and there's the calculator. And by continuing to press and release tab while I'm holding alt, I can scroll through each of these. Now I'm doing this very slowly, but here's what I want you to notice. If I was in my heyday and working as fast as I could, I can switch very quickly between windows. Hold alt, press tab until I get it around paint. Once I get the one highlighted I want, I release the Alt key. So now I can move back and forth between my calculator and my paint window this quickly. And if I wanted to bring in some other things, I can just continue to go as fast as possible. Now that's not to show off how fast I can actually do Alt tab switching. It's just to show you that once you get good at this, you have to trust me that it's much faster to use this keyboard shortcut than it is to move your hand to the mouse. Imagine that I was typing in WordPad and I wanted to use the calculator. Instead of typing, 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 moving to the mouse, minimizing WordPad, maximizing the calculator, typing in my entry, minimizing the calculator, maximizing WordPad, all I have to do is type, type, type. With my hands on the keyboard, I can Alt-Tab to get back to my other programs, and you can see that that's going to be a much faster alternative. I really do like Alt-Tab switching. And remember that if you happen to be running Windows 7, and if your keyboard has a Windows key, you can substitute the Windows key for the Alt key and get a really cool three-dimensional effect. What I want to do now, though, is I want to go ahead and work with multiple windows just a little bit more. So I'm going to start by closing the calculator. Now the calculator is kind of in the middle of my stack here, and I could go up, make it active, and click on its close button, but I also can close things right from the taskbar. So if I can't see them, if they're buried under other windows, it's no big deal. To do so, you simply move over the taskbar button and right-click. And right-clicking will give you the option, regardless of which operating system version you have, to close the window. I'm going to go ahead and choose Close the Window, and you can see that the calculator goes away, as does the button from the taskbar, and everything's good. Now we know how to move and size windows by dragging their title bar, by getting the double-headed arrows and resizing them. So if I wanted to arrange WordPad and my paint window side by side, or one on top of the other, I certainly could. But I think you can also see how that would take a little bit of effort and probably time to get them exactly right. And then they probably wouldn't be sized exactly even as well. Another feature that you have is available from the taskbar. When you have multiple windows open, you can right-click the taskbar. And these options are going to be slightly different depending on which version of Windows you have. But most of them will have an option to cascade the windows to show the windows side by side. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Cascade so you can see that option. 
you can see that it kind of fans them so you can see the title bar and if I had five or six open windows I still could see at least the titles and the file names for each one that I had. If I move back down to the taskbar and right click and this time choose show windows stacked that puts them one on top of the other. In Windows XP the term is going to be show them vertically or horizontally. Here they've changed the name just a little bit. And then of course you can probably guess what my next option is going to be. Again if I right click the next option is to show windows side by side which instead of stacking them one on top of each other is going to show them side by side. Hopefully you can see though how quickly that allows you to work with multiple windows without having to manually move and resize them yourself. Now why would you want to do this? Well one reason might be because I have an email that I need to work with and maybe a letter or some type of file that I need to respond. Instead of bouncing back and forth by using alt tab switching I could simply place them side by side. That way I could continue to look at my email and then write my response on the right hand side. I think you get the idea. There are many times when you actually want to see windows arranged in this manner and the easiest way is to simply right click the taskbar. Another option that we had from the taskbar with a right click was showing the desktop. That's going to simply minimize all windows that you have open very quickly. And that actually is a good thing. Let's say that you work in human resources and you happen to be reading or writing a private issue dealing with one of your employees. Somebody walks into your office. Instead of kind of fumbling around and oh wait, 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 let me minimize all of these windows it would be much faster just to right click and say show the desktop. Another option I want to show you though is new to Windows 7. So I'm going to press escape to get out of the shortcut menu and I'm going to move over to the far right side of my taskbar. Now remember this is only available in Windows 7 but you can see a little tab. If I put my mouse over that tab I can click and it shows me the desktop. This is the same feature but it just saves you a click. Instead of right clicking and having to find show the desktop it's a little bit faster to come over here instead. With most of your applications as well if you simply pause over that option without actually clicking it will temporarily hide the window and as soon as you move your mouse off of it you get to see it again. That's nice if there's something on the desktop that you just want to take a quick look at and then get right back to work. One last thing that I want to show you though because I still have my paint and my word pad open is what to do if an application starts to behave badly. Now in our analogy we had the kids and some were trying to be helpful and studious and others were just playing but sometimes they just behave so badly that um, you kind of need to not deal with them right now. Often for parents that's called a timeout. Well, We can kind of send our applications to a timeout as well. If your computer ever freezes or locks and you've waited a little bit of time, you've tried clicking, you've tried pressing escape, all of the different things that you know to try and you just can't do anything with it, this is going to be your last option. If you press control alt delete at the same time and actually my recommendation is to press control and alt first and then delete just because that tends to work a little bit better, you will see a variety of options come up on your screen. The one I want to talk about right now usually is at the bottom of the list and it's called the task manager. If you click this option it will bring up a window showing all of your currently running applications. Now there are a lot more things to see here. You can go into processes, services, performance, networking. All of these though are very high-end kind of IT activities. We simply want to be on the applications tab. And if it was paint that was giving me a problem I couldn't get it unstuck for whatever reason. I can simply select it and I can move to the bottom of this dialog box and I can click end task. It says the system cannot end the program because it's waiting for a response from you. Now you can go ahead and choose to wait or if the program is really stuck what you need to do is say yes I understand that but go ahead and end now because we've already waited for the program, we've already tried to do different things, we know that we don't have an option. So we will click end now and after just a few seconds that will effectively close the program. You can see that it's no longer on my taskbar and it also is no longer showing in the Windows Task Manager. The Task Manager should not be used normally to close down Windows. When you're working in an application you typically want to save a file 
and then close it using either File Close or your Close button or by right clicking it on the taskbar. This is kind of your last ditch effort if you've tried to do things and it just seems to be stuck for some reason. But this allows you to close down a single application. In other words, take care of the one unruly child without having to take it out on all of the children, in this case all of your applications. So if I was working on two or three different things, I now could close this window and I could continue working with those applications, having handled the one that was being difficult. Just to get us finished up here, I still have WordPad open. I'm going to go ahead and right click, choose Close the Window. I don't want to save any changes that I've made. And with that, you have now been introduced to multitasking and the use of multiple windows at the same time using the Windows Opera.